Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part nine of my algebra video tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to start working with matrices. I'm going to show you how to add them, how to subtract them, how to use scalar multiplication, and how to multiply matrices. Okay, so basically, a matrix is just a collection of numbers in a grid. And up here, you can see that is a matrix, and that is a matrix, and that is a matrix. And in the example where we have this matrix up here, this is a matrix that has two rows as well as three columns, which should be very clear. And whenever you refer to individual elements in a matrix, you list first the row and then the column. So over here where we have A21, that is referring to this element right here which is in the second row and the first column. And in situations in which you would just have a single number, like we have here with B2, that refers to the fact that this matrix has two rows and two columns. And another way of referring to matrices is that you have row matrices, which only have a single row, and then you have column matrices, which are made up of just a single column. Now, whenever it comes to adding matrices, it is very easy. All you do is you find the elements in the same row and column, and you add them together. So, for example, if I had one matrix, and it was 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I had another matrix, which would be 5, six, seven, and eight. To find the sum of both of them, all I would do is add them together. So I would get a value of one plus five, which is going to be equal to six, of course. And then I have six plus two, so that's going to be eight. And then I have three plus seven, so this is going to be 10. And then I have eight and four, so this is going to be 12. So as you can see, very easy to add matrices. Whenever you subtract matrices, you do pretty much exactly the same thing. You find the difference between the values in the corresponding positions. So what we can do is, let's say that we have five, six, and seven, and eight, and we want to subtract from this. Well, one thing you can do is you can add instead. So that would make this a negative one, a negative two, a negative three, and a negative four. And then you could add those values together. And then I think you can figure out that you would get values of four, 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 and why not one more, four. And as you can see, very easy to add and subtract matrices. Now a scalar, is just a number that is used to change the magnitude of values. It's just a number that we are going to use to multiply times individual elements inside of our matrix. And scalar multiplication is just simply multiplying all values in a matrix by a scalar. So for example, if you had a matrix A, which is equal to one, two, three, and four, then if you had 2a, multiplying them times 2, of course you would get values of 2, 4, 6, and 8. And in situations in which, let's say we had 2a, 2 times the matrix A, plus 3a, 3 times the matrix A, here is the matrix A, of course, that I'm going to be using, you just need to follow the order of operations and always multiply first and then sum the results. So of course, in that situation, you would get two, four, six, and eight, and then you would get three, six, nine, and 12, and then you could add those matrices together to get the values of five, 10, 15, and 20. And there you go, that is scalar multiplication. Now prepare yourself because multiplying matrices is a lot more complicated. Now whenever we multiply matrices, first off we have to be certain that the number of columns in the first matrix 
is equal to the number of rows in the second. And I'm going to show you this in multiple different ways to verify that you 100% get it. Okay, so whenever you're trying to find this value up here in the upper left hand corner, you're not simply going to multiply these values together. You can see I have everything divided into 1, 1. That means first row, first column. 1, 2, first row, second column. Second row, first column. Second row, second column. Okay? And then we also have the same thing going on with the matrix B. All right. So if we are going to multiply matrix A times matrix B with real values over here, what we need to do is we are going to go and find said values. And you can see here is the algorithm we're going to use. So if I want to find the upper left hand corner, what I'm going to do there is I'm going to put A11, which in this situation is going to be the value of 1, which is this guy right here. Then I'm going to multiply B11 times that, which is this guy right here. So put that inside of there. Again, just like I said, we're always going to multiply and then sum our values. And likewise, using this algorithm right here, I'm going to go and get the value that is in the A12 position. So I will get the 2, and I will also go and get the 7, and that is going to give me my answer if I multiply and sum, which is going to be equal to 19. So we can also think of A times B being equal to, and I'll redraw the matrix down here. So there's 19. Okay, so for the next guy, I'm going to go and get A11 once again, just like this little formula here says. And I think you can refer to that on your own. So this is going to be 1, this is going to be 6, this is going to be 2, this is going to be 8. And if I go and perform that calculation, I get a value of 22 and 22. And on the next slide, I'm going to show you in a more visual way exactly how this is all going to work out and I think it'll make a lot of sense. Basically what we are doing here is we are going and getting the rows and multiplying them like we'll get this row right here and then we're multiplying it times this column and then this column. All right so first we're going to be working with this part here is going to be coming from data from or actually not from there, from here. And then this one is going to be coming from here. So maybe I'll show you that slide right now. As you can see, we have all our values all set up. This is going to be in the upper left-hand corner of our matrix, the upper right-hand corner. This is going to be the lower left-hand, and this is going to be the lower right-hand. And you can see all the formulas. And basically what we're doing is we are taking this guy right here and we are multiplying it times this guy and then we're getting this guy and multiplying it times this and then the answer to them both is going to be summed and put in that position and you can see we're doing that once again we'll get this one multiplied times this one plus this one multiplied times this one and again and then that result goes here once again, then we're moving to the next row. So we're going to take this one marked with the one multiplied times this value and then added to this value multiplied times this value to get this final answer. Once again, this value times this value right here plus this value uh, multiplied times this value to get this final part of our matrix. So now I'll go back and I'll finish up the problem. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So we're taking the rows, multiply times one column, then to multiply times the next column, then we're going down to the next row, this row to here, and then we go and find the value for this column, and then we find the value for this column. Okay, so we got two of them solved so far. Now I am going to have a value of three for A21. I'm going to have a value of five for B11. I'm going to have a value of 4 for A22, 
and a value of 7 for B21. If I go and calculate all that out, I get a value of 43, which I can then put down here. All right, let's do the final one. So for A21, and when I say A21, I'm referring to this formula right here. I get a value of 3, and I'm referring to this part of that matrix. Then I go and get B12, which is going to be 6. Then I'm going to get A22, which is 4. And then I'm going to get B22, which is 8. Multiply both sides, sum them, and I get a final value of 50. Like that. And 50 goes in here. And here is your answer when you multiply these two matrices at the upper right-hand corner together. This is what you get in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, one thing that is very important to remember is any time when multiplying matrices with an unequal number of rows and columns, the result will have as many rows as the left matrix, and it will have as many columns as the right matrix. And I'm going to go and solve this for you. So what we're going to do is I am going to find P11, and P is going to be the answer to the matrix. So if we have this guy right here, like this. This is going to be P11. This is going to be P12. This is going to be P21. And this is going to be P22. So I'm going to go and answer all these. Again, I am using exactly the same thing that I did before. I am going to take each of these elements and I'm going to multiply each of them times these elements in this column. Then I'm going to sum them together. So how this works out is I get 1 times 7 plus 2 times 8. Might help to slow down my time in my speech or just simply watch this part of the video over again. All right. And if I go and perform all those multiplications, of course, I'm going to get 7 plus 16 plus 27 and if I sum all those together that gives me a value of 50 all right and after you watch me do this go rewind it back to the beginning before I give you all the answers and work it out yourself and then you will get really good at doing this stuff always best to go and practice and practice and do lots of problems so now we want to get well we can come in here now get rid of this part because we have an answer for it it is 50 so there is that one and now I'll calculate the next one so again we're going to do exactly the same thing this one see I can just write them in here because I know they are coming see all of them times except this time I'm going to work on the next columns this is going to be 10 plus 2 times 11 plus 3 times 12 and I got that from this right here. All right, so if I go and multiply all those together, I get 10 plus 22 plus 36. And if I add all those values together, I get 68. So I can come in here and I got another answer to my problem. So I can write the 68 right there. Okay, let's do another one. So let's do P. 21 and what do you think I'm going to do this time? I'm going to be working with this row of data right here and then I'm going to be going through this column here and then this column here. So let's do it. So we will have 4 times 7 plus and then 5 times 8 plus 6 times 9. And if I go and multiply all those, I get 28 plus 40 plus 54. And then if I add all those values together, I get a, val a final answer of 122. So we got that. And let's get rid of this and get rid of that. So 122. Only one more to go. So let's go and get P22 is equal to 
And this is going to work out to 4 again, as you can see. And then it's going to be 10 plus 5 times 11 plus 6 times 12. And if we multiply those together, we get 40 plus 55 plus 72. And if you sum all of those together, you get 167. And I come in and write that in right here. And I have solved my problem and given you multiple examples on how to go and solve them on your own. All right, so hopefully that helped a lot. And of course, you can always leave me questions and I will help you along. And up next, we're going to cover determinants and cofactoring. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.